Hello, citizens of the verse. I'm just a tourist of the Frag Nav Console. Tonight, I'm going to be attempting to deliver a big Benny's, Benny's, a, a big Benny's vending machine to Benny Senge. So, I've gotten onto a EU server because it's very early in the morning for them. I want to attempt to be unmolested by other characters, but we'll see how that goes. Alright, so far so good. There is a free landing pad. So, while we're doing this, I wanted to uh, talk about the... I don't know if it's a revelation, but there is a uh, GameStar magazine article. It's a uh, German gaming magazine. And it was recently mentioned that they are planning to launch Star Citizen with uh, perhaps 5 to 10 complete star systems. And this is at launch. Now, perhaps something was lost in translation there, but uh, from what we know now, this is uh, what they had actually uh, meant to say, or at least we'll go off that assumption. Uh, excuse me here while I do a search for my stream so that if anybody's commenting, I can see you make comments. There we are. Got the live chat open. Oh, and let me turn the volume down on my phone so that we're not getting that wonderful echo. There we go. So yes, five to ten star systems. Uh, according to the the uh, see, streaming and uh, playing is actually harder than it seems. But uh, according to the uh, Kickstarter campaign goals. Uh, the game was supposed to launch, or at least they said that they had planned to have 100 systems available with the game. And now what we see is they're saying, well, 5 to 10 systems at launch. Me personally, I am in favor of that. I'm in total favor of that for several reasons. Now, one reason and the, uh, I guess, most practical reason for us uh, who currently play Star Citizen right now is it means the game is going to be out sooner. Here, let me concentrate on going to where I need to go, which is the Kovalex shipping hub. And ideally I can do that without running into Port Olisar. Looks like I'm going to have to take a little detour around Crusader here. So we will do that real quick. And I will try to remember where I left off. But yeah, so what I expect or think they're going to end up doing. Let's see, here's the shipping hub. Is they're going to get the, uh, the basic core mechanics of the game down, working properly. They're going to get all the systems there. They're going to get the economy in there. They're going to get that working properly. They're going to polish everything, make sure everything's all bug tested, feature complete and everything. And uh, once that's all working properly, then we can have like five to 10 systems to where we can explore. And with the procedurally generated planets, you know, there's not going to be any lack of content there. And from a pragmatic point of view, the game will be out sooner if they release it with five to 10 systems and if they release it with all 100 systems. But, and here's the gameplay reason why I hope they release it with five to 10 systems. I actually think that that would be a good thing for the game because what I would like to see is as they get new systems prepared and ready and uh, yes, I know I'm trespassing on Colflex. Once they have all that there and ready and good to go, let me try not to run into a Cove Lex here. All right, there's no other players here, so hopefully I'll be able to get in and get out without my ship getting blown up. <laughs> that would make me very happy. But anyhow, from the gameplay standpoint, if they release with five to 10 systems, what they can do, and this is, uh, 
very desirable for those of us players who want to explore is as the systems become ready you can let the players discover them so maybe they could make an announcement hey this system's ready maybe they don't even make an announcement but basically the people who do the exploration they do that long-range scanning come on come on cargo bay doors there we go as they do that scanning it'd be cool if the players could actually discover the anomalies out there, find the jump point, map the jump point, go through the jump point. Well, I guess that's part of mapping it because going through the jump point, you have to find a successful nav there, which is a little dangerous in itself. Uh, but once you do that, you get through the other side, then you can come back through and you can publicize the fact that you found it. And of course, the player that found it gets his name put into the uh, to the database, like the uh, the Ark uh, database, as being the discoverer of that system. Um, and also, you know, there's that game, like there's that thrill of discovery, you know, being the first. But then also, past being the first to uh, discover the system, you can also map out the system. So even once you jump into the system, don't have it completely mapped out in the star map, but let the players map out the system. Let the players discover the planets. Let the players discover the moons. Let the players discover maybe any other jump points that are in there that are available for other systems. And so that makes the exploration aspect all that much more rewarding for the uh, current players of Star Citizen. And for all the new players who start playing once the game is officially released in that matter. And I would even say it goes so far as to have the systems, like unless it's an alien system that already has an alien population, but to have the systems unpopulated, don't have the, uh, the space stations, don't have the satellites, don't have the settlements there, but just have it be a blank system and after a while, have the settlements start to pop up, have the space stations start to pop up as this as the system becomes quote unquote settled. So that's that's what I would hope to see happen with the uh, five to ten star systems. Is that yeah, it starts as five to ten. We have the game out, everything's feature complete, everything's working properly, the economy's there, the cargo's there, um, the criminality system is there, the death of a spaceman system is there, you can purchase ships in game, you know, all the core mechanics are there except the content's not all there the content has to be discovered and I think that's a very important core mechanic of this game is the exploration and discovery so if you give the players the chance to do that I think that would be much more rewarding to the players as a whole than just saying Okay, here you go. Here's all 100 star systems. Uh, yeah, you can explore them, but you're not really discovering them because they're already in the star map. And you know, I mean, that's that's no fun. But just yeah, I think they should give us five to ten star systems at first and let us discover the. Re and of course, you know, the star system all 100 aren't going to be done. You know, they're they're going to be working on them. They're going to be designing them and creating them. That's going to be content creation though. So it won't take as long to create that content once all the core mechanics are there but as Cloud Imperium Games gets the uh, systems completed and uh, and mapped out or well, I mean not mapped out but as they get them completed let the players discover them let us find them and publicize them to the game and map them out and I mean, of course, you won't literally be mapping them out, but you know, as we discover things, it will be revealed in the star maps of other players once the player has published that information. And maybe, perhaps, and this is another mechanic of that, maybe a player who jumps through and finds a really rich field of ore that is very valuable, and maybe that player doesn't publish the fact that he found it. So you could have a situation where a player or maybe his organization is the only ones that has access to a system because they haven't told anyone else they found it. 
And so there we have is a chance for somebody else to stumble upon it. So it could be discovered quote unquote twice. And so maybe it would take a second discovery to really publish the availability of that system. Uh, and I'm not sure, let's get this out of the way. I'm not sure, but I think that was kind of the same thing with the uh, the Americas. I mean, Columbus is discovering, or Columbus, bah. Columbus is credited with discovering America, not because he was the first, but because he publicized it. And because he publicized it, he's the one that everybody remembers. Now, really, it was probably the Vikings or someone of that nature, or I, I suppose if you went far enough back, you could say the Native Americans discovered it first. As far as Europeans, probably the Vikings discovered it later on, but they didn't publicize it. They didn't make it... I mean, they didn't go out and let everyone know. And so, whereas they were maybe the true initial discoverers, from Europe at least, they were not the ones that everyone remembers like we don't we don't know that it was hiccup of burke who discovered the americas but we know it was columbus who discovered america because he publicized it he made it popular all right well so far so good as far as the big big benny's uh machine project it is out here now i need to get back into the constellation and i'm going to scoop it up and we will go ahead and deliver it to Benny's Henge. If you don't know where Benny's Henge is, well, you have two options once I scoop it up. You can continue to watch my stream and learn how to get to Benny's Henge, or you can stop watching and try to find Benny's Henge by yourself. The only hint I'll give you is it's in Yela. So if you want to find Benny's Henge, if you don't know what it is, it's in the asteroid field of Yela, and it's waiting there to be discovered. So if you want to discover it on your own, once I get there, stop watching and go and discover it for yourself. If you already know about it and you're just, hey, what's this crazy guy doing? Oh, uh, whoops, you know, I shouldn't have gotten into the pilot seat because I need that cargo bay to be open. <laughs> but if you already know about it and you're just interested in watching and listening to me give my opinions on this, uh, what I hope will be the uh, best darn space sim ever, then continue watching and hopefully I can be somewhat entertaining for you. And yeah, I don't have my camera on, mainly because I'm not really doing dogfight combat, stuff like that, so there's no need to see me moving my sticks around stuff like that. This is more about uh, delivering the big Benny's machine to Benny's Henge. Which I did successfully do the other night, but I wasn't... Uh, recording the whole time so now I'm doing it and I'm recording the whole time and uh, we'll see if this is interesting for anyone so now that I'm in the pilot seat we're going to switch out to third person view and we will scoop up the vending machine there we go get into all right now the big Venny's vending machine is still out there now I have to try to control this. Let's see here, let me get oriented here. Here we go. Wait a minute. All right, I'm looking at the bottom of the ship. All right, here we go. <laughs> I never noticed that the uh, back engines move like that. Oh, that's pretty cool. See, so you learn something new every day. But the Constellation is the uh, ship of the month for July. So if you are a subscriber to Star Citizen, subscribers are the portion of the uh -oh, portion of the community that uh, provides a little bit of extra funding so that they can do their content, you know, like extra content, like uh, their various YouTube. Uh, things here. Let me deploy the landing gear so I go a little bit slower and can hopefully scoop this up. Yeah, the subscribers are backers who provide a little bit of extra funding so that they can 
do their various little YouTube uh, videos and stuff like that keep us provided with updates and uh, as return for that they allow us to fly a different ship every month and in the case of this month it is the whoops oh boy it is the constellation all right I think it's in there it's in there let's make sure it's not going to go out oh no it's not quite in there not quite let's scoot over go up ever so slightly there we go all right it is in now, I thought I heard a siren saying that hey there's somebody out there hopefully they're going to leave me alone will I do this thing that would be nice if I can actually accomplish this on the first try oops I almost used the ladder by mistake come on where's the there we go cargo bay no not the ladder ah oh shoot oh come on don't be doing this to me now okay where's the all right close cargo bay here we go with the big Benny's machine is it actually gonna land upright no it looks like it's going to there we go <laughs> oh there it is we got the big Benny's in the constellation now to deliver it to Benny's henge I did try to deliver it to Port Olisar. I was able to get it out, but I couldn't quite get it up the stairs and through the airlocks, so I decided, well, I'll just deliver it to Benny's Henge instead. Looks like we are spinning wildly here. Fortunately, I am still in the ship, so I can gain control back of it. Another wonderful little glitch for the ship, like sometimes these ships like to just go completely nuts if you uh, tap them the wrong way. Enjoy the ride. All right, let's see here. Good control. There we go. Oh, come on. Seriously? Oh, seriously, game? You're breaking my ship. Oh. This really sucks. If I get out and back in, it will start functioning properly, but I think the ship is broken. Oh, I thought I was going to be able to get this on the first try. But it looks like the ship is glitched. Okay, here we go. The ship is deglitched. <laughs> All right. Oh, and look at that. We are actually pointing at Yela. Turn off that. There we go. So now I'm going to Benny's Henge. If you want to discover it on your own, stop watching. If you know where it's at or you don't mind knowing how to get there, well, continue watching. Here we go. Now, another subject that was talked about recently on the forums is the whole issue of PVE and how that should be dealt with and character death and stuff like that. Let's see here. This Let me think about how I'm going to get there. All right, it may be a little bit longer this way, but we'll be in here for the long haul. But to get to Benny's Henge, what we need to do is not hit that asteroid up there. We need to fly to the dark side of the moon. And in the dark in the shadow of the moon and the asteroids will be a larger group of asteroids with some flashing red lights. 
and that is where Benny's Henge is at. So I'm just going to get above here so that we can just go there and not have to worry too much about the asteroids. And we will now make our way to Benny's Henge. I might be able to get there quicker by quantum traveling out and then coming back in, but we'll just do it like this for now. So this is the long, drawn out, boring part where you just have to cruise the asteroid field for several minutes. But another thing on the, like I was saying on the forum, was the issue of, right, how is PvP going to work? How is character death going to work? And there's, and there's a two side of it. There's the player versus environment type players who would much prefer to play the game and enjoy the economy and do their exploration and stuff like that and not have to worry about getting blown up by somebody who's just out there to blow people up. And then there's the PvP side that does want to be able to battle other players and and all of that entails. And there's there's that balance there that needs to be struck. The balance between, okay, yeah, they do want to have piracy in the game, so there does need to be that risk that somebody's going to come and try to take your cargo from you. And a lot of times that person might be um, an AI or AI pirates you can fight off, but sometimes that might be a player that you have to defend your cargo against. Now, like ideally within the game, they would like to have it to where there's multiple levels of criminality. So you could be a pirate where you can demand somebody dumps their cargo, and if they do so, then you leave them alone. Or maybe you make a deal where you know, maybe the pirate's not sure they can take him out, but they'll say if you drop several units of cargo, then I'll let you go. I mean, because right now, it's very binary. Uh, the PvP is very binary. And I mean, what I mean by binary is it's either you kill the other player or the other player kills you. I mean, there's it's kind of, there's no two ways about it. Well, I guess there's a third way out is one of them ends up running. <laughs> but for now, that seems to be like the only three outcomes. Either you blow up the other player, the other player blows you up, or you run and get away. Now, I think what the vision is, is to have other options out there to have the criminality system as such to where if you do just or maybe a, a system where if you blow up another ship then perhaps a majority of the cargo blows up with it and so you're not going to be able to salvage as much whereas if you left the ship intact and maybe took the the crew as prisoners or maybe didn't take them as prisoners but you just took their stuff and left it well, you still have a crime stat, but your bounty is less, like the, you're less of a criminal than if you take over a ship and kill everyone on board. I mean, I, that'd be the same way as it is in the real world. Like if you, if you go inside someone's house and you rob it, well, you're going to have one penalty. If you go inside someone's house and kill everybody and, and burn the house down and take everything, or take everything, then burn the house down, well, you're going to be subject to stiffer penalties than if you just simply go in, take something, and get out. Or even when the... How, and, and I'm not promoting this in any way. I mean, I'm a gun owner, so I'm prepared to defend my house. But anyhow, that's what they want to try to foster in the game is have piracy and these various PvP things be not as binary, but give the people who want to play the pirate type characters a reason to not have to kill everyone but a reason to maybe just go in and take somebody's cargo but not necessarily blow their ship up or not necessarily kill everyone on board um, being able to provide the motivation for players to want to do that is going to be where the balance comes in 
Now there's another type of PvP player out there that I'll just I'll simply call the griefer. The the player that just wants to blow other people up. They don't care about you know trying to make money out of it. They just want to blow people up for the lols, you know, and that's the griefer type character it just wants to hey, here's a guy who's been hauling cargo all across the universe and I just want to blow a ship up just to ruin his day. And so that's the other type of gameplay that I think a lot of people like a lot of the legitimate players like me are worried about. I mean, we don't mind maybe having to negotiate with the pirate to give up some of our cargo, but we're going to live through that. But we don't want to just get indiscriminately blown up. And so that's where the balance of, right, well, how hard is it to blow up a, uh, a cargo ship? You know, how many other ships does it take? How easy is it to get away? How easy is it? to not allow someone to get away that's where the issue comes down and also the issue of how stiff is the penalty for the kind of player that just wants to go out and essentially be a serial killer the kind of player that just wants to go out and, and be like some sort of a, a, a Jeffrey Dollar you know, basically just someone who wants to kill people and they don't really care about the profit or anything like that and so it's between all right well stiffer penalties trying to make death hurt trying to ways to discourage that kind of behavior like how do you discourage that kind of gameplay i mean yeah you could outright ban them and now uh, it might come to that depending on how bad it gets or i mean there's the idea of the uh the pv sleep the PvP slider has been in there where if players want to do more PvE, better player versus environment, then the game will try to put them with other players who are like that. And if someone wants to be more PvP, then the game will try to put them with that. And I think maybe even dynamically the game would have to work that way to where if someone just wants to go around blowing other people up, well, there needs to be some way for the game to determine that, hey, that's what this player is interested in, so let's put this player in instances with all the other players who just want to go around and blow people up. And then they can just go around griefing each other and leave all the rest of us alone. You know, And, and that's not to include the, uh, the people who want to do what I'll call legitimate in-game piracy, which is what I described where... You know, maybe you take someone's stuff, but you don't necessarily blow their ship up type gameplay. Okay. So here is Benny's Henge. So we have made it. Yay. And maybe uh, for the fun of it, I might uh, try and grab a Pips machine <laughs> and maybe uh, defile Benny's Henge by putting a Pips machine there. Since this has been successful. All right, time to put the gear down. Just to uh, allow a little bit more precise movement here. And we're going to go back out into third person view here so that we can get better lined up with everything. Get the end of the cargo bay lined up with that. And you want it to be high enough so that you can take it out in EVA mode, but also low enough so that gravity will grab it. So I think we're low enough here. I can find the right uh, camera view. There we go. Now, hopefully, the ship's not going to spin too terribly much as I do this. It was successful last time. But here's my big Benny's machine, still in the cargo bay. So, if I can just get the uh, open cargo bay dialog to open up. I think everyone's hoping that item system 2.0 is going to make these kind of things a lot easier to do and quicker. Let's see, and I have to get up on top of this thing in order to, there we go. 
All right. Whoa, 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 what's going on here? Yikes, what just happened? Okay, I am on the surface. Where'd my big Benny's machine go? Okay, so the ship is spinning now. Where'd my vending machine go? Is it still up there? Oh, I think that's it. That looks like it. There it is. The one odd vending machine there. Let's make sure I don't fall into the man-eating gap. There we go. And I should be able to just uh, slide this around. Yep, that is my machine. So let's go ahead and slide it over into the gap. Last time I was able to drop it into the gap. Hopefully this is going to be a large enough gap. I dropped it actually inside the ring when I did it the other day. Looks like it'll probably fit. I'll have to get it over this uh, guy here. Uh-oh. Is it stuck on him? <laughs> get in there. Come on, get in there. Yeah, I know there's a dead guy there, but maybe if I uh, reposition it a little bit. Come on. Get in there. Get in there. Hmm, is there another gap somewhere that it might fit through? ship spinning off into space. Might have to see if I can get into another gap here. See, hopefully stuff like that they fix. All right. Ooh. Yeah, maybe now. Oh, come on. I think it's getting stuck on this dude down here. Might just have to play around with it to get it to uh, get in there. Alright, let's gently push it out here. I don't want to push it off the platform. Actually, maybe I do, because if I can get it weightless and push it in from the top, that might be what I end up having to do here. But I don't want it to get stuck inside the train. Because, like, there is a gap around this platform that I have seen players get stuck in before. Let's see if it can fit through this gap here. Hey, there we go. There we go. Yeah. There we go. We will present this Big Benny's vending machine right in the middle of Benny's Henge. And there we go. One delivery of Big Benny's to Benny's Henge completed. Unhooked there, and there it is. I 
One new vending machine delivered to Big Benny's. Uh-huh. That's right. 